Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis, continuing on my series where we are prototyping a space combat game. And in the last video, I presented some methods for controlling spaceships. And in this video, we'll actually implement some of those methods and talk about how those work. I've basically set up three different ships with three different controls or scripts for controlling them. And I've attached a trail renderer to each ship so we can show you how these ships are moving. And in this case, I'm doing this kind of simplistically uh, right now. Um, but we're going to look at each of the motions, talk about the controls, and then we're going to review the code for each of these. And you can see here, I have a ship that is set up very basically. This is essentially just an input. And all that's doing is I have the space key. When I press it, I move forward. When I don't press it, I don't. When I push left or right, I roll left or right. And when I push down, I pull up. And when I push up on the arrow key, I go down. So I have a camera that doesn't really follow because I wanted to, I still have this older camera script that I've been using. Um, and the point of using that is to just show you how it's moving without you know losing track where the trail is so I can kind of follow the trail wherever. But you can see right here, I've got my ship. When I press space, I move straight. When I start to turn, I go in a circle. And if I do this, I kind of loop, I roll. Uh, so this is roll. This is actually pitch. So I'm pitching back and pitching, I would say, down. Um, but those are the controls. Up, down, left, right, and forward. And you can see one thing I wanted to point out is when we actually do back and thrust, we're making circles. And no matter which angle we go at, we're making circles. So if I change and turn a little bit, I'll complete another loop. If I turn again just a little bit, I'll make another loop. And if I turn a little bit, I'll make a perfect loop. And that will always happen no matter which angle I'm at. So let's go review the code for this ship. So this is my waveform. This is the ship we're using right now. And I've attached to it this vehicle space script. My naming conventions aren't going to be great for the prototypes. Whenever I start building up the full real game, I'll actually start naming these things correctly, things that actually make sense and are consistent. But for now, I'm just kind of throwing them together. And as I go along and think of new things, I'll throw them in there because I'm not even really going to use all of these. So um, in this script, all I've done is just put in a public speed I can modify. I've got roll, pitch, and yaw, each of those afloat. I discussed this in my last video if you want to watch that to understand what these are. Roll is simply when you move left to right, your ship rotates uh, counterclockwise or clockwise. And then pitch is if you push up or down, it'll do a backflip or forward flip. And then yaw is another method. I don't really know. I don't have it in my scripts. I'm not even using it. But yaw is when you kind of turn them. So you're not really rolling them, you're actually like flat turning them. It's kind of like spinning a disc. So you spin the disc. Um, and then we've got update. And in update, we're basically just saying roll equals get access raw horizontal. And pitch is get access raw vertical. All we're doing is saying when we have an input for horizontal or vertical, we're going to rotate them. For the roll, we're going to ro rotate that around the vector 3 dot back. You can do forward, but if you do vector three dot back times your roll for your horizontal input, left is going to be counterclockwise and right is going to be clockwise. So that's why I chose back. Now in your game, if you build one, you'll want to have an option for players to choose how they want this to be. But I went ahead and did it the most intuitive way, the one that's most common. So we've got roll so vector three dot back times roll times a hundred just to give it some speed because otherwise it rolls really slowly, and then we have times time dot delta time. The, there is a second argument that we're passing here, and that is space dot self. So we want to make sure we're using that in space because if we don't, we're going to be using a reference to space dot world, and depending on where you're at, that doesn't always match up. So you could actually be going the opposite, and I'm going to show you that by changing this to world right now. For the transform rotate vector three right, this is our pitch. And if you use right, this will invert. So up actually pushes the nose down and down pulls the nose up. 
And so I prefer that as my preferred input. You would want to actually create an option for your players to, to choose which way they want, because this is one that's really variable. People may play one way or the other, depending on what they're used to. And if they're using a mouse, for example, opposed to a keyboard, people who use mice might want up to go up and down to go down, so be aware of that. Um, but we're using that times our pitch, times 100 again for to give it a little bit of speed when pitching up and down, and then times time dot delta time, and again, with the argument space dot self. Then the last part is just the input for space. We're basically just saying move it forward times speed when spe space is pre pe blah when space is pressed. <laughs> and we'll go back because we changed this to space dot world. I wanted to demonstrate what may happen. I'm not going to do it to both because that can get kind of crazy and may not be able to show you what's going on. And I'm just going to press the space or press play here. And I'm going to press space to go up and I'm going to loop and we're looping just fine but what happens is once we start turning things get wonky and I am holding just left and down so my ship should be making a circle or a loop but instead it's going around wavy like see how it's changing direction it's looping and then it's kind of turning right and it's kind of turning left it's going to turn right and it's going to turn left and it's going to turn right and it's going to turn left and that's because we're using the world space for our rotate instead of our local so if you want to do we want to see what we're doing here see how my ship i'm actually just pressing right right now and my ship is turning left but if i rotate it back to its original orientation and press right now it's going right so we're going right around the world space each time and so depending on how we do this, sometimes it'll match up like right here. It matches up just fine. But if we flipped completely upside down, I wanted to rotate back using right again. Now we're moving left instead of moving right. So that's why you want to make sure you're using space.self for either for any of your vectors. Make sure you're doing that correctly because otherwise you'll be doing some weird movements just like this. And I'm using left and yet for some reason I'm turning right because I have flipped completely I'm I'm facing the opposite way of the world space so um, and that's and that's a problem to watch out for so we'll move on so that's our waveform with just transform I'm going to disable this for now jump into our waveform with just the rigid body this is the one that's going to most simulate space physics again it's very simplified it is not like real space physics um, because we're just going to be applying torque and you know Real space, you'd actually be applying a force based on where your engines are, things like that. Um, but I'm just applying torque to turn it um, and torque to pitch it. So we're doing roll and pitch with just torquing. Um, and uh, we're applying a force when we want to we press the space bar. So you can see here, I want to point out the rigid body real quick. We have the rigid body on this waveform RB, which stands for rigid body. And our mass is 1,000. Our drag is zero, much like space. There's barely any drag unless you're like maybe I don't know in some kind of like field of, of gas or something like that but if you're in space with nothing around there's no drag and there's also no angular drag so we're going to demonstrate this in a second but I want to uh, kind of go over that because that's a critical point to remember um, I need to set my camera I should have scripted this I have it um, but I've got my rigid body I want to make that the target of my camera because my camera just focuses on the ship and now we're going to press play and we're going to see what happens now. So again, riveted body, we're just applying forces. I'm going to go ahead and start thrusting forward. And now I've stopped thrusting. And if you've noticed, my ship is moving and I have not pressed thrust anymore. I'm still moving. I've done nothing. And, and that's what's happening. In space, when you apply a force to something, it just keeps moving. There's nothing to slow it down. There's no, there's no gas. There's no friction. There's no drag. And so it just keeps moving. And keeps going and going and going and so if I were to turn up oop, 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 let me slow myself down I, I turned myself up but I also had to force myself that back down you'll see I'm not applying thrust but I'm still moving forward you can see that trail renderer is still adding to the trail so there's an issue there um, and that is we don't really have a control where we're saying if we're facing up we need to stop moving forward now we're moving forward so let's go ahead and thrust up and you'll see, I'm still moving forward as I start thrusting up. I did not just automatically stop one or the other. And so now I'm going up and I'm not thrusting anymore. 
And so I want to correct my course. So how do I do that? Well, if I want to, like, let's say I want to reverse it. Oh, and you see there I have no angular drag. So what's happening is if I start thrusting down again, you'll see I'm thrusting and letting go just slowly. You'll see I start going down. But my course still has not completely corrected to just being straight. We still, we're finally going straight now. And I'm going to go ahead and turn again. And I haven't even gone other directions because this is going to get crazy if I do. But I'm going to try and just stop completely. And I have to thrust backwards. Now I'm facing the other way and I'm, I'm pushing the thruster. And you can see I, don't, I still don't look like I'm moving yet. And now I'm going down a little bit because I wasn't completely facing. And, um, and so every time I turn, I'm having to counter that. When I'll, I'll flip forward and then I have to flip backwards a bit because I overshot a little bit. And it's very hard to control. So what happens is, like, let's say I just try to hold back a little bit. I'm going to start spinning. And so my ship is spinning. There's no angular drag, so it's not going to stop spinning. And there is no drag for moving straight. So whatever force that pushed me in a direction, whatever that was, whatever those combination of forces was, I'm going to keep moving in that direction. I'm spinning. I'm not applying thrust. And this, this could go on forever. I mean, it really is, there's no drag, no, no angular drag. So we're just going to keep moving like this. And if I add drag, what happens is because I'm applying a thrust in multiple directions and I had a previous direction, I'm just going to keep going about the original direction. Um, so I'm actually applying thrust right now, but I'm spinning so fast that I'm thrusting back and then forth and then back and then forth. And I'm going to keep going in the original direction because I'm kind of applying thrust equally in all directions until I start trying to apply another angular rotation and now I'm going to slow down and once I get to I better slow down here you can see I started moving back again but anyway that is kind of how space physics really works um, again this is not exact because we're not using like the engine to do the rotation we're just applying a torque which is not how you would typically do that and if I wanted to start applying you know other other uh, forces like I wanted to turn right and I just kind of kept it down for a bit spinning out of control and now you can see I'm just kind of all over the map now and I don't know if I'll actually recover from this or not but anyway you can see we have kind of crazy amounts of, of effort to correct our courses because there's no drag it's very counterintuitive so when you make a game and you want it to be kind of a, a space combat type game um, remember that, you know, as hard as it is to control it without any other external factors, imagine how hard it would be if you, you finally mastered the, the piloting, but then you get hit by a laser and it knocks you off course. Now you have to learn how to correct that. And the, the amount of mastery it would take for one person to figure out um, how, to, how to really control a ship um, would be very difficult. So um, in those cases, you would probably want to implement things like uh, a dampener where you say we're not going to allow inertia or inertial forces around certain axes or planes, um, things like that. So just keep that in mind. Um, and I'll show you my last, uh, my last waveform, which is no longer a rigid body, but actually it is a rigid body, but we've changed the scripting a bit and we've set the, uh, we've set the drag and angular drag to 1.5 and the two same mass, the script's a little bit different. I'll cover that in just a second, but... Oh, I need to have my camera enabled, huh? We'll kind of go over this. So, now I've kind of got a bit of a script that gives me some drag. And I also have it so that, you know, when I turn, I do stop turning without having to force it back. You know, the angular drag does help that. And so I it's something that's kind of smooth. As, and at, at this speed, it's smooth. If it gets faster, it's not going to be great. And again, this is a prototype to demonstrate the really fundamental aspects of these controllers. And we'll talk about the script here in just a second. But you can see this is a real smooth way of moving. And it's kind of like airplane physics where when you're looking forward, that's about the direction you're going to go. And I also have a bit of a glide functionality on it. And that glide is just a uh, taking the original throttle and slowly, slowly slowing it down so that we're not just stopping immediately 
Um, and the reason why I did that is because if we just use drag, we would just stop as soon as we take off the throttle, which would not be an ideal situation. So uh, let me clear these. I think these are okay now. And we'll go look at the script for this. The I didn't go over the rigid body space vehicle, so we'll cover that really quickly. Um, we have basically we're just taking and these scripts are going to be very close by the way they're not there's not a lot of difference in them um, but the rigid body uh, the space vehicle we have our start we're just going to grab our rigid body component and then we have a float for torque so how quickly are we going to rotate this and then a float for thrust and how quickly are we going to you know push this vehicle forward and then our start is just grabbing that rigid body fixed update just like the previous script, we're grabbing the roll with the horizontal axis, we're grabbing the pitch with the vertical, and then our throttle is the space key. So all we're doing for every fixed update, we're doing rigid body, add relative torque. And again, we're using vector 3 dot back times torque times roll. So that's the input. And then we're doing the same thing for pitch. Add relative torque, vector 3 dot right times torque times pitch. And now you see I don't have a space.world or space.self uh, because that's what the add relative torque is. So we don't need to do that. And then if throttle, we're going to add a force vector 3 forward times thrust. So this is the one that when we didn't have any anything, we were just moving forward in space and we didn't have much control over it. Now the rigid body aircraft, this is a little bit different. We had remember we had drag and angular drag so the torque I made a little bit more torque um, thrust was 100 F again so the same thrust but I also created this glide uh, value and it's a float and again not ideal this is just very simple to get the concept rolling to, to kind of explain this um, but on our start we set our glide to zero and then we're grabbing our rigid body in our fixed update we're again grabbing that roll with the horizontal, grabbing that pitch with the vertical axis, um, and then the throttle is space key. And again, we're using our add relative torque with the vector three back and the add relative torque with the vector three right. But on our throttle, we are going to add a relative force again and set our glide equal to our thrust. So, um, the thrust, when we set the glide to thrust, when we take off of the throttle, then once we're off the throttle, glide slowly decreases. So we're going to keep moving and it's not an ideal motion path. My thought would be with thrust, you know, once you take off the thrust, you decrease a lot right at first, uh, but then slowly slow down. This is just basically as soon as you take off the thrust, you're about the same and you just kind of like linearly uh, start to decrease in your speed. Um, until you get to zero basically, which would take a while. So um, so we're still forcing it forward uh, with the glide once we take off the thrust, because otherwise with the drag it would stop immediately and that's not what we want. So anyway, those are the three ways that you can uh, kind of implement a system. Uh, really what I'll be doing is mixing up a bit of space physics with aircraft physics, um, but you know, aircraft physics that is nowhere near uh, it's way more complicated in terms of what you would set up with aircraft physics because now you have gravity. Now you have to consider uh, the uh, your your wings and how you got lift from those wings. And in space, we're not doing that. So space is actually, uh, I would say, actually a little bit easier um, in terms of how you're programming the physics. Maybe not as easy in terms of how you're programming the rotations because uh, you have extra considerations there. But overall... Um, that's about it for now. So thank you guys for watching. And I hope to see you next time.